I told him if he will let you know he's here because I might not see him. Okay. That's right.
Tonight is our first night that we are uh, live on the county's YouTube channel and, you know, in an effort to try to be more transparent and give our citizens an opportunity to watch, participate, or at least watch our proceedings here at our monthly meetings. This will be our first night, so I'm uh, grateful for our IT department that obviously we had uh, a part in getting us ready for that. Also, just want to gently remind you, if you would, when you do speak, if you could speak directly to, at least towards your microphone, that way you can pick up the best for folks that are not here to So now I ask Ms. Best to give us safety. To provide for the safety of those attending this meeting, please listen to the following instructions in case of an emergency. First, please take a moment to note where your exits are. If an emergency arises that prompts us to evacuate, please exit this room in a quick and orderly manner through one of the two doors to your right, and then proceed to the nearest stairwell, directions to which are indicated by the exit signs. Once you exit the building, we ask that you safely cross Granville Street, which is the street that runs beside our building, to our parking lot to be safely away from the building. Our staff will help provide additional direction and assistance. In the case of a tornado warning, we ask that you exit this room into the hallway, where we will all remain until it is safe to exit. And in the event of an active shooter in the building, if there is an accessible escape path, please run and try to evacuate the premises. If you can't evacuate, Find a place to hide where you are less likely to be found and lock any doors that you can. And as a last resort, and only if your life is in imminent danger, please fight. Our staff will provide additional assistance on what to do. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Eternal God, our Father, we give thanks for another day, another time. We give thanks to you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We ask you to bless our minds and our hearts. We might think on the things that make our county a better place than we should live. And as we decide, may it be done to have our constituents through Christ our Lord and through prayer. Amen. Amen. Uh, you have in your agenda packages uh, the minutes of our July 28th and July 3rd uh, meeting. At least so direct to the design of the motion. So mm -hmm. Second. Questions? At this time, I'd like to call the public hearing for order to receive citizen input and a possible application to the North Carolina Department of Commerce for the CDBG neighborhood rewrite in the The public hearing is called for order. Mr. Pierce, would you please read the public notice? Yes, sir. On August 7, 
Uh, the Rural Economic Division of the North Carolina Department of Commerce will announce the availability of Community Development Block Grant Neighborhood Revitalization Fund for activities within the county later this fall. The program is centered around renovation and replacement of substandard housing for low to moderate income families, and most of the funding must be used for low to moderate income owner-occupied housing. The program funds can be used for the following to address housing and other public utility street and drainage conditions within a neighborhood on a scattered site basis or for emergency housing repairs. Construction, reconstruction, rehabilitation, or installation of public facilities in support of housing or improvement or removal of architectural barriers to promote energy efficiency. Senior and community neighborhood recreational center, parks and playgrounds, shelters for persons having special needs such as Shelters for the homeless, convalescent homes, hospitals, nursing homes, battered spouse, shelters, halfway houses for runaway children, drug offenders or parolees, group homes for the mentally challenged and disabled, and temporary housing. Water and sewer connections for low to moderate income persons to lines not constructed with CDBG fund, and lastly, emergency housing repairs. The maximum grant request is yet to be determined. The program does not require a local match. However, some level of local funding may help the application score higher. We must conduct two public, he public hearings prior to the submission of an application. Tonight's hearing is the first, and the purpose is to receive public comment about possible application activities. During the second, we will explain to the public the contents of the proposed application after approval by the Board of Commissioners. After, excuse me, after we receive citizens' input, I recommend that you call for a second public hearing to be held at your September 5th board meeting. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call for public comments. If there's anybody here who would like to come forward and speak, please come forward and state your name and address for the public record. Is there anybody here to speak? This is not public comments now. Okay, this is a different public comment. Okay. We will we'll, we'll get to public comments. Now. Is there anybody here to speak? Please come forward this night. I have a process question. Did I understand you to say that we're going to hear the content? We're going to ask questions first and get the content later? So what there, did you say? How? What is the order of the information? So tonight is just to get input from I understand the process. We will have a second public hearing next month. I'm asking about what you just spoke. How are we proceeding at this meeting at this time? Did you say that we're going to get the questions first and then the content? I'm just asking for we, order of information. We, we normally we normally don't ask questions. We we seek public input and take your information. Certainly, but you're getting ready to provide information to us about the grant. Is that not correct? I just did. That's what I just Is that did. all that you're gonna to provide yes. to us tonight? Mm -hmm. Oh nothing more. Okay, thank you. Is anybody else here to speak? Hearing not, the the recommendation is to call for a public hearing on September. Uh, the fifth. Yes, sir. Do I, do I have a motion for Second. questions? Somebody vote sign aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, the public hearing is a second public hearing is called for September. Schedule appointments. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have Ms. Teresa Lewis, our tax administrator, who is here to present the annual tax settlement. Included for your consideration as a resolution to approve the annual tax settlement as well as the resolution charging and authorizing her to collect remaining taxes unpaid from 2012 to 2022 and the tax was levied in 2023. Good evening. Um, you have a copy of your annual, annual settlement required by state statute in your agenda package. As you can see, the collection rate for the annual taxes went down from 95.37% for FY 2021 to 22 to 95.34% for FY2223, a slight decrease of 0.03%. I'd also like to report that the motor vehicle tax collection rate for FY22 and 23 is 99.77% collection, a slight increase of 0.13% from the past fiscal year, which this increase in motor vehicle collections and a minimal change in the annual collections of overall Ended collection rate ended with a combined rate of 95.91%, which is the same rate as the previous fiscal year 21-22. The past two years has presented its challenges, one of which is having all new staff within the collections department. They've worked very hard over the past year learning collection procedures as well as North Carolina general statutes. 
the staffing challenges has only allowed us to maintain our minimum needs for collecting the monies received, not allowing us time to concentrate on enforcements as much as we would like to have. With that being said, I'm very pleased with what the Deputy Tax Collector, Ms. Lisa Skinner, has accomplished this year along with Mr. Peters and his staff. They have um, helped as well. Um, as well as thanking Mr. Evans and each of you for your continued support in our efforts to increase the collection percentages by allowing us to hire a delinquent tax specialist this fiscal year. Their role res sole responsibility will be concentrating on enforcement of delinquent taxes within our office. And our continued goal is to reach the state average of 98.11% within the two years of hiring this additional staff person. I'd like to share a few statistics of enforcements that are done within the collections office. I know everybody always hears about what happens um, and how we're bad, but um, <laughs> this is what we have to do. Um, we have actively 62 payment plans. Um, we received 15 new filings of bankruptcies this year, totaling $42,757.29, which is untouchable. Um, the state that, that set our program, we utilized them with um, a total of a new 152 debts, which we collected $11,303 this year with using that. We did 13 bank garnishments this year, collecting $24,739. We did a total of 1,342 wage garnishments this year, collecting $269,243. We also garnished what we call S-cheats, which is your unclaimed monies, um, with 62 claims. With that, we collected $14,669. We were able to increase our sheriff executions this year and serve 94 taxpayers and collected $133,420. I'd also like to share, collect, um, thank the sheriff's office for that assistance and that. We appreciate your help. Um, and we did 76 additional parcels sent to the attorney's office for foreclosure. We sold 26 properties, which I'm glad to report that the county did not purchase any of those. Um, and out of those 26 sales, we collected $159,000. Um, total foreclosure collected through the year was $590,358. That did include an additional rush at the end of the year trying to collect um, additional monies, which was 145 correspondents sent out with an additional $118,234 that we collected with that. Um, as you can tell, we're very, very busy within our office and we do utilize everything that the general statutes allows us to do to collect those taxes that are outstanding. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions? If not, we take action. Yes, sir, Mr. Yes, Chair. So the first action would be to approve the uh, the first resolution, uh, which tax is the second. Yes, sir. It's a motion to approve tax collection settlement as of June 3rd, 2023. Questions? All in favor, let's get number two. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Can we down this approval? The next one is charge of tax collector for collecting taxes for the year 2013 through 2023. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Question. Questions? All in favor, let it be no matter what time. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Yes. Thank you, Mitchell. Thank you. Um, we have uh, some scheduled guests on uh, on your agenda tonight. Uh, first, we'd like to welcome to the podium uh, Mr. Peyton Kaiser. He's the 4-H delegate to attend the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners Fall Conference. And I believe Ms. Taney Heath is here as well to make a formal introduction. Yes, yes. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I am honored to introduce you to Peyton Kaiser. He is one of our 4-Hers. He's going to be our representative to attend the commissioner's conference later this month um, but with that I'll have to do a, a little marketing advertisement for Peyton he was just um, put in to, or he was inducted into the honor club which is the highest honor a 4-H member can be in so he was just inducted into that what two weeks ago a week and a half ago um, but anyway so he's one of our um, 
favorite 4 H'ers. He um, has done a little bit of everything in 4 H, and now he's getting ready to go find out a little bit about government. So we would like to get a picture if that's okay. You, you like to come and show him? You like to say anything? on the schedule, but we do expect him to be running late for another meeting, so if it's okay, we'll push him down the agenda and, and call him up when he gets on track. At this time, not, now let's go to the public petitioner, so if there's anybody here who would like to speak, please come forward and take your name and address for the public record. Ma'am, I see you sound like that. If you want to come up and get some additional... Well, don't let her go ahead. She's standing. Come on. Can you go ahead and go Come on, come on. Yeah. Somebody. <laughs> Good evening. Kathy Williams, 208 Robin Grass, Starboro. I think you all know me by now. <laughs> Brought you guys some pictures, and I'm going to tell you what they're for in just a second. The Edgecombe County's new vision statement is, Edgecombe County is a historic place that values its citizens and natural resources and creates opportunities where people are proud to live, work, play for generations to come. I disagree. I've lived in Edgecombe County my entire life, and I have never considered leaving Edgecombe County as much as I have in the last few months. I'm actually actively looking for housing outside of Edgecombe County, which I never thought I would do. And I'm tired of paying outrageous taxes when I see nothing for it. The Sheriff's Office had to beg for vehicles. We've been begging for a shelter front for how many years? You know, we got duplicate facilities in Tarver and Rocky Mount, even though Tarver's the county seat, and there's going to be a, a grand reopening of the health department in Rocky Mount. I thought part of buying the big building down here and, you know, the two buildings that are out there by the shelter that are just sitting there, you know, they're just, it's a waste of money. And, and again, like I said, I started asking for a new shelter many years ago, and I know it's been talked about, but here we are, still waiting. I, you know, I, I don't think that anybody understands the number of dogs, puppies, cats, and kittens that are dying, that, that have done nothing wrong. They have no reason to, to die. Um, and I don't know that anybody in the room understands what compassion fatigue is. And I think I've told you guys before that animal euthanasia is that killing an animal humanely, most commonly with injectable drugs. So don't you think about the shelter attendant we have. This year alone, 330 dogs and cats have been euthanized at the shelter. That is a 46% euthanasia rate. We had it down to less than 20%, and we are back up to 46%, and it's only August. You know, I, And I don't think anybody can can understand what that feels like if they've not been there. I don't have to euthanize, thank God, I couldn't do it. Um, I've told y'all before that I own stock at McDonald's as many chicken nuggets as I bought, and I bought more recently because I know those dogs are going to die. 72 hours is state law, you've got to hold them 72 hours. Well, a lot of times if we have a few extra days, we can work with an animal that comes in that's terrified. But when you don't have any room and the calls don't stop, you don't have time to work with the dogs. they got to die. And that's not fair to those animals. And I don't know how to fix it. The citizens of the county, yes, they absolutely need to be more responsible. Um, you know, we started offering the state spay neuter program. Um, and by the way, Williamston has not received a check, so we need to um, get on that if we can. We owe them a little bit of $1,400. Um, and they were, Williamston Veterinary Hospital was gracious enough to do that program for us um, because neither vet in Tarboro would participate. And so we've done some. We want to advertise it more, but... Until we get it, make sure everything's straight so the veterinarian's office can be paid. That's kind of a catch-22 for us. And I've, I've actually offered, matter of fact, I offered a lady today that can't go to Williamson. I'm going to take her dog to Williamson for her and let it get fixed. And I'm going to go back the next day and pick it up. Just because it's the right thing to do. And 
these pictures. So back in May, the shelter closed for two weeks. But they have the floor sealed and the walls painted. And I'm not sure who was hired to do that job. I showed Mr. Matthews some pictures um, last Monday, but they were on my phone. I didn't have them printed, but I printed them for y'all, and there's two sets. Um, Stan has been talking to the company that did the work because apparently it's supposed to be a 15 year warranty. I don't know if they used the wrong paint. I don't know what they did, but if you go to the town shelter and look when theirs was sealed, they've not had a single problem. And there's a picture of a puppy in here. And the reason the picture of the puppy is in here because I want y'all to see that a 25 pound puppy ripped the sealant off the side of the kennel. Now, if that sealant had been done correctly, a 25 pound puppy wouldn't have been able to tear it up. The paint's coming off the walls already, and it's only been since May. And if that's the kind of work that company does, then it was a waste of money. I'm sorry, but it was. Um, like I said, we got to do better. I, I don't know how to fix it. Um, but I do know that as a taxpayer, I've been severely, severely disappointed. Um, I've seen some of the trucks the sheriff's office had to get because they couldn't get SUVs or they can't get cars. And anybody that's looked for a new vehicle knows they're hard to come by now, no matter what you're trying to get. I mean, I think the PD ran into trouble trying to get SUVs. And with some of the places they go in the county, they absolutely need the trucks and the SUVs. So that might cost a little bit more. But then you think about the cars. They had the, the terminals in the cars, the laptops in the cars. Well, then the things in there may not fit into the trucks. But they've got to adapt. So I, I, don't, I don't know what the solution is, but I'm asking for help. I know you committed to a shelter. But at this point, I mean, the land hasn't even been touched. And that was, on the agenda, that was in the county's plan two years ago, I think. And the land is still sitting there. I mean, that timber could pay for part of the building. I, I just don't know what the solution is, but I had to let y'all know how many animals were dying just because there's no room. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Question. 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 Can you tell me uh, what's the reason why the local veterans will not participate? We didn't get an answer. We, asked, we sent the email out multiple times because we have to provide to the state the proof that we asked. Um, we sent the email to both veterinarians' offices twice because asked if we have to submit something to the state in writing, um, and we got zero response. The first time we called, they said they didn't get the email, so we sent it again, and Amy sent it from her county email, so we have proof both times that it was sent, and we got no response. Not that I'm aware of. I know the reimbursement is low. Um, so the reimbursement for this year... For a, a dog spay is, I think it's around two hundred dollars or a little more. And if you walk in off the street as a private citizen, um, I think they charge around five hundred dollars. But yet, there's other vets like the one in Williamson that will do it for what the state reimburses. And to neuter a cat, it's like I think the reimbursement's right at a hundred dollars, and that's a surgery that takes five minutes. So I, I don't know if it's because they don't think they'll get any. I don't, I don't know if they think they won't gain patience from the program, if that's all they'll do when they never see them again, but um, we're seeing that there are a lot of people that want their animals fixed and they just can't afford it. And this program has been a, a godsend to a lot of people. We've got a lot of senior citizens um, because we can do it on income too. It's Medicaid, food stamps, or um, the poverty limit. So, Is anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Please come for attention now when I finish. Good evening. My name is Dr. Tracy Phillips. I reside at 1109 U.S. Highway 301, Whitakers, North Carolina, 27891. Our county's board's conduct has been nothing short of a disappointment. With abdication, desertion, and malfeasance, leading to a dereliction of, the, of their duty as responsible stewards of our resources. This outrageous and unacceptable performance is now public knowledge, apparent to all except those who turn a blind eye to the truth or recklessly ignore the consequences of their actions. <clears throat> Such behavior cannot go unpunished. Those who act in this manner must face the consequences. The state auditor's recent report revealed clear red flags about the board and the county manager's performance. Gross mismanagement 
and a failure to lead by example have eroded the trust of those who rely on the county manager's guidance. This hypocrisy undermines the very essence of leadership that should be earned through accountability and transparency. Moreover, there has been a failure in fiduciary duty to provide adequate oversight and accountability of the county's resources. Repeated failure to reconcile bank accounts, late penalties, and inaccurate payrolls have resulted in the wastage of valuable resources that should be utilized for the betterment of the citizens in this county. The lack of due diligence from both the board and the county manager is an embarrassment. Matters that are material to accountability have been overlooked and a lack of monitoring or reporting. Have I been turned off? We, 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 we. <laughs> has led to a delegation of financial management responsibilities without any sense of responsibility. Perhaps most concerning of all is the overall failure to communicate effectively with the citizens of this county. Essential information has not been shared transparently, leading to a lack of trust and high rates of staff turnover, toxic leadership, abuse of authority, and a disregard for the community's voices have created an atmosphere of mistrust and dissatisfaction. The consequences of this lack of, of accountability are evident. Our chief administrator seems disconnected from the realities at hand, displaying poor judgment and ineffective oversight of labor and resources. We cannot afford to have a leader incapable of meeting the challenges that lie ahead. In light of these alarming circumstances, I earnestly call upon the board to do the honorable thing and demand the immediate resignation of the county manager. Our county deserves better, and we stand at a pivotal crossroads, a moment that will determine the future and fate of Edgecombe County. The choice is clear. We can either continue with the leadership that has left us at the bottom in health, housing, and education, or we can embrace a new path of accountability transparency, and good governance. Something that propels our county forward. We demand the change, we deserve it, and we're holding you responsible for your neglectful actions and you need to be held accountable. We deserve, as the citizens of this county, nothing less. Thank you. Is anybody else to speak? I have, uh, my name is Roger Sylvain, and I'm at 1109 U.S. Highway 301, Whitaker's, North Carolina, same address. Um, I noticed the other day in reviewing your, your budget, I don't know if you know that we have a debt service of, for a $3 million principal, and that we have budgeted for the interest on it, which seems to be 19% interest a year. I don't know if, if y'all are aware that it's such a high interest rate on that particular amount of money. You know, it's either the bankers are making really a good deal or somebody else. Is that a way of reapportioning money at a different time for other, other reasons? Mr. Harris, please look at it. The other thing is uh, for, the, for the, the principal in the school, the $658,000 in the interest on that is 11%. 11%. So we're paying 11% on interest on one loan and 19% interest on the other. You know, those are two things. And the other day I attended the good meeting that uh, your manager put together last Monday. And he mentioned the fact that you were hiring a new person to be responsible for coordinating uh, unemployment to employers in the county. 
I think the amount was like 1,300 unemployed, and there are about 1,600 jobs. I did a little research, and I found out that you guys already have people doing that. You already have an office dedicated to that in this county. And it has four professionals in it. It's over at the Edgecombe County Community College. I believe Ms. Harris works in there. And they do that. As a matter of fact, when I spoke to the head of the department, he was flabbergasted. He didn't understand why in the world did we need to hire somebody else to do his job. Now, he can adjust the focus to resolve some of the issues that the county wants to address. But again, this is a matter of wasted money. Uh, hiring somebody else, one person, when you have four people and a whole staff of experienced professionals to be able to do so. I wish you guys really take that in consideration and make the necessary adjustments. And that's it. Anybody else to speak? John Walker, 1303 North Main, editor of Much Harbor of Today Digital Newspaper. I'd like to just raise the question uh, about leasing versus borrowing money on vehicles again. Uh, conversation came up prior to the budget. Uh, it came up before the budget was voted on. Uh, we still haven't gotten anything. Uh, but one of the explanations was the fact that one, one company was talked to rather than Enterprise because Enterprise wanted the entire county's business and not just the sheriff's office. What's wrong with that? I've sat in meetings before where we've talked about trying to find mechanics to work on the vehicles, having trouble finding diesel mechanics. Uh, we talked about a, a lot back over here where we could build a shop. Why not go with the company that would take your vehicles and have a management program for all of the vehicles in the county? That takes it off of the department head and let, allows them to do the job that they're supposed to do. Uh, Ms. Harris asked that question before, that she didn't didn't understand that we didn't have a, a vehicle maintenance plan. You know, that's that's prudent spending of taxpayer money. You know, and, and that's the that's the one thing. It's all taxpayer money. You know, uh, I don't know what the interest rate is uh, at Southern Bank. I believe that's the one that we're using. Uh, but if we can get a better deal with Enterprise, if they want all of our vehicles and they want to do a vehicle maintenance plan and the sheriff's office has a vehicle that has 150,000 miles we're going to know that 50,000 miles ago they came and got that vehicle and they've got better better set of wheels you know it makes no sense you know we've got to do a better job of spending our money if my wife and i don't do it at home and we're on a fixed income we're going to be in trouble well, y'all are on a fixed income because we can only give you so much. You know, we're already at 95 cents. So thank you very much for allowing me to say that. Good evening. From Old Stancy, 127 Midway Lane, Tauber, North Carolina. Mailing address, P.O. Box 1391 Pine South, North Carolina. First, I want to start off, uh, Mr. Attorney, you need to talk in the mic. I used my old laptop today so I could bring this up here. People were still posting, they couldn't hear you. I don't know how, but I posted that day. Uh, y'all got y'all side up. Maybe they can go over there. Maybe they can hear you. But I want to echo what uh, my committee member back here from the Animal Control Committee. I want to echo all that she said about animal control. Um, being on that committee, um, and I don't know where we're at now. I haven't had a couple of meetings, I guess, because of the song or whatever, but I'd be glad when we get back on it and do something and move forward so we can do something about a new animal shelter. And then the last thing y'all know, I always talk about in my Edgecombe County Sheriff's Office. Uh, it's embarrassing to me, um, the video, the uh, gospel singing at Edgecombe Community College on Saturday evening, and to look out in the parking lot and see this old explorer, about old as me, when I'm 60. It's embarrassing to me. Our county got these old vehicles. We need some new vehicles. I don't get it. I know everybody else has spoke on it. I hate to sound redundant, but it is what it is. 
I hope I see some new vehicles next year because people need the, the, the officers need to be able to make it on a call to the call. Again, they need to make it back home. I think some of them don't make it. Might make it their call breakdown, vehicle breakdown. In other words, let's get some new vehicles. Thank you. See anybody? Just a quick comment. Are the attachments available to the public? What's that now? The attachment to this document. You can request. We can give you a full package. Thank you. Is there anybody else to speak? Any comments from the board? Well, I'm going to just make one comment. I don't usually do it at public petitions, but, you know, we have a seven member board, and it takes four members of the board to approve of anything that comes out of the budget. And some of the projects that you're talking about have been, we've been working on at some some length of time. Um, and we can only spend, as I said, we've got a fixed income, we can only spend what we've got. And it has to be spread around. And we make those decisions on where we're going to spread it. And sometimes we can't do every department head that comes here wants more money. And we have to make decisions on how we're going to fund them. And that's what we think we do. There was one comment about, I have to comment about this, about our, our manager. He managed how many employees we got? About five And while oversight is his responsibility, along with that of department heads, a lot of things you can't fix, things that don't get to you. But I've been around HCOM government for probably 24 years. And I certainly give this manager full confidence, full confidence in terms of uh, his ability to do his job. And, and, and I'm not asking the board to comment, but uh, if I've got anything to do with it, you will stay here as long as I stay. <laughs> if I can have that, you will be here. So I want to respond to that, okay? And we would like to see you know, we do value citizen comments. And if we get them more often, whether they're against government, but they're supportive, mm -hmm. um, but we do a lot of things that we like to hear that we do well. Um, and sometimes we are privileged, we the board, we are privileged to, to have an agenda package that will contain more facts than you as citizens get. And those are the things that we deal with. We deal with. Um, we're working on that shelter and feel close. We're working on, can't no, no department will get everything they want. And we will not do it on the schedules that some we have to do effectively. But the funders that we have, we will continue to do it. So a lot of you might not be satisfied. But we'll continue to do things according to the budget that we have. Any comments on that? Okay, now next on the agenda. Um, is that coming? Yes, sir. Right here. Can I cut us off before we come? Well, I asked you what you did. I asked you before I come. I never cut the board off. Well, Mr. Thorne, Mr. Thorne, do I allow you to speak? Do I allow everybody to speak? But do I allow the board to speak? Yes, sir. Thank you. understand um, our citizens' feelings um, as a county commissioner. Believe me, I share those feelings. Um, during 20 and 21, we were in a pandemic. A lot of people were not working full-time inside the building, which allowed a lot of things to not happen as they should have happened. Um, our finance department has had to be completely revamped. We found out during that time we had people who were unexperienced, unable to do the job at hand. So believe me, we took uh, precautions, and 2021 is gone. Now we have to start on where we are now. That department does not look like it used to look. We've made sure that we've hired people with experience. We've made sure that we put money in the budget so that we can get the best 
because we understand finances is at the top priority of any county because we've got to make sure that everything that we're supposed to take care of is taken care of. Now, whether you know it or not, county commissioners, we pay taxes just like you do. So, of course, we got upset when we saw the report. But we also had the opportunity to look at that report and see that the auditor did not have some things quite right. Now, you can't believe everything you read. I worked in the newspaper business for 15 years. You can't believe everything you read. you got to remember who's doing the report. you got to remember before you take the blank out of my eye, you need to take it out of your own. So believe me, this board has come down and made sure that there are processes in place so that what has happened does not happen again. <laughs> believe me, we're not the kind to close our eyes to anything, even when it comes to our manager. Believe me, he's been told. He's been shown. But remember, he's a man just like the rest of us. And in 2021, he had his hands full just like everybody else. And right now, we believe that we're in a good place. Um, the gentleman mentioned about the people at Intercom Community College. Dr. McLeod, who's the president of the college, is working with our manager on that specific job to include it with what he has. Because what he has is dealing with education and work. We've got to remember, everybody's not going to Intercom Community College. Everybody's not going to college, period. So we're trying to get people to work who want to work with their hands, their jobs out there. People that can work with their minds, their jobs out there. So I just wanted you to know that after 22 years of serving this county, yes, I was disappointed. Yes, I was one of the first ones to let him know I was not satisfied. But you got to remember, we're all human. Mistakes have been made. But we have put things in place to make sure that we're at the best that we can be for right now in 23, 24, moving forward. Here and on, I see, um, I believe Mr. Webb came in, regional director of the Office of Congress. John Davis, please come forward. Good evening, everybody. Uh, it is an honor to be here, Mr. Chairman, to the Board of Commissioner, County Administration, uh, and to the citizens of Edgecombe County. It is an honor uh, to be standing before you uh, this evening. I will be brief. Um, do you know if you're able to get the Yes, Jason, if you will, you can pull up the presentation for Mr. Webb. Uh, while they pull that up. Uh, my name is David Webb. I'm the Regional Director for Congress and Don Davis. Uh, the, off the, the Congressional District covers 19 counties, uh, and Edgecombe is a part of that Congressional District. Uh, and I represent uh, Edgecombe County as the Regional Director and as your point of contact if there's anything that our office can do uh, to be of service. Um, I have a, a little presentation here so you can have a visual aid, but I will definitely be talking on top of it. Um, what I wanted to be able to do here this evening... I think it's clicking off of mine and going to somebody else's when I hit the button. Jason, if you'll pull up the other presentation, this is Antoine's presentation we're looking at. There it is. Yeah. What's the right? Is it the side button? Okay. Uh, yes, here we go. All right, so some of the things that our office provides, what I'm going to do is tell you a little bit about what our office provides. Thank you, sir. A little bit about what our office provides as well as some of the things that we've done uh, over the last six months that Congressman Davis has been in office. Uh, some of the work that we do, one of the most important pieces is congressional case work. Uh, as the office, we can serve as a liaison between the constituents uh, in a federal agency. So if you have an issue or a case or a situation that has come up, uh, we can act uh, as that liaison to reach out, to get an inquiry, to get an update. Uh, obviously, we can't change the outcome, but we can get you an answer and try to see through some of the confusion. They are required to respond. Uh, I do like to be upfront. Sometimes it takes 60 to 90 days to get a response, and sometimes it takes one to two weeks. Uh, but we will let you know what that average response time uh, is when you reach out. Uh, some of the successful casework that we've had, we've received 
uh, over $30,000 uh, for a surviving son of a veteran. Uh, we've gotten somebody their passport in way less than two weeks um, so that they can make it to their trip. They were very grateful. Uh, so that's just a little bit of some of the things that we've done. In terms of the constituent outreach, that is where the regional directors come into play. And we're in the community often. We're showing up at your events, at your gatherings, uh, at your meetings. If there's any way that we can be of service, we want to make sure we're present. But you got to let us know. Let us know where we can show up and how we can serve better uh, so that we can continue to do that outreach in the community each day. In terms of educational opportunities for the youth, uh, we have three main ways that we do that. And that's through the Congressional Art Competition. So if uh, there's a young person that is great at art, uh, wants to submit their artwork, we have a banquet for them. Uh, and then that will happen towards the end of the school year. In the beginning of the school year, we have a Congressional App Challenge where they can create their own app uh, to really get involved and engaged uh, in coding, uh, which is really important to get that down here in the East. Uh, and additionally, we can do recommendations uh, for Congressional uh, uh, for military academy. So we can do recommendations uh, for you to do that as well. Uh, and commendations and greetings, if there's any type of letter, if there's a retirement, there is an award, if somebody has done something wonderful, we can give you a letter from the Office of Congressman Don Davis. Let us know how we can do that, and that goes for the county as well. Uh, we'd love to be, you know, assist you all in honoring the folks that are doing great work every day for the East. Uh, flag requests. Uh, we can do a direct flag request. So if you would like a flag flown over the Capitol, with a personalized letter to go along with it directed to that individual uh, or the nonprofit organization. We can do that as well. And then federal grant assistance. Uh, the way that works is if the county is applying for grants, if there is a nonprofit applying for grants, we can do a letter of support uh, from the congressman's office on behalf. So please let us know so that we can be helpful in getting the money down here to the east, in Edgecombe County particularly. Uh, and then consistent representation in Congress. Obviously, the number one job of the legislator is to legislate uh, and to do legislation. So the congressman uh, is really big in that, make sure that he hears your concerns and showing up. Uh, and we show up in a numerous different ways. We show up in town halls uh, that are general public. We show up with listening sessions. We show up with round tables. And they can be focused on specific issues that are important to the East, right? So we've done agricultural listening sessions because the farm bill is up this year. So to hear exactly what folks need right here, right, instead of just figuring it out in D.C., we want to listen to you all. Uh, so we want you to participate in those ways. We've done tours uh, to different factories, industry, small business, meeting with different local officials. Um, and then we do newsletters and texts and calls. I'm sure plenty of people uh, get those. Um, and then virtual seminars, such as the one we did for community project funding to give the towns and counties information on how to apply for funds from the federal level. Um, in addition, I'll give you a little bit of legislative updates so people are most uh, interested in. Uh, the congressman is one of the most bipartisan members uh, in Congress with 85% bipartisanship rating. Um, and that has allowed him as a freshman member uh, to be a co-sponsor in over 150 pieces of legislation. Um, he serves as a vice ranking member on not only the House Agriculture Committee, which we know is critical to the East, but as well on uh, the Armed Service uh, Committee as well. Uh, so if there's anything that you have an issue with in those regards, please don't hesitate to reach out. We certainly want to hear your feedback and take that back uh, to Washington. Okay, perfect. So in terms of appropriations, this is what everybody wants to know about where the money is. Uh, uh, the community project funding, for those that do not know, is how the federal government uh, works to get money down to the local towns and counties. Uh, and in terms of that, uh, I'm going to be really direct and intentional about, about that response. Uh, Congress has set the stage uh, for a chaotic September, uh, with the House and Senate on a collision course over appropriations and the risk of a partial government shutdown already being assessed. Uh, out of the 12 annual appropriation bills that Congress has to pass every year, the House has only passed one of those bills. That's military construction and VA funding. Uh, because those 12 bills have yet to pass and members are in the district right now until mid-September on a recess, um, uh, it is there's likely not going to be enough time that the government will be able to fund those bills uh, and have them all negotiated by the end of the fiscal year, which is September 30th. Uh, so that means that we will likely have to consider uh, continuing resolution, which means a continuation of the current funding levels, not approving next year's uh, fiscal budget, which contains those community project funding uh, requests. With all that being said, the projects are in their respective committee reports accompanying their appropriation bills, uh, but we still cannot guarantee that these bills uh, will be passed. Uh, but we do hope that we'll be fighting for that funding for the East. 
Uh, full circle, just so you know about it, uh, and this is where I'll end. Uh, Congressman Don Davis loves to highlight what is going on in eastern North Carolina. There are so many good things. There's people that are doing great things. There's organizations that are doing great things. The county is doing great things. But we got to highlight that, honor that. People need to know that the East uh, is, is on the map, right? So the congressman is going to the floor uh, more than any other member, and that is a fact. He won the competition for that, uh, to tell stories about the East and to tell the stories of the citizens. We see Mr. Joe Balo here, uh, and actually that is a 102-year-old veteran uh, that was shot down twice. Uh, as, a, as a bomber pilot, uh, but lives to tell that story. So Congressman Don Davis told that story on the floor, and I presented to that congressional record. But we want to do more of that, right? We want to tell that story because it needs to be highlighted. It's been too far left behind. Uh, so please let us know if there's anything like that. The Congress needs to come and sit down and then talk about that or highlight that on the floor. Uh, thank you all so very much for your time. I appreciate all of that time uh, that I took up from this important meeting. Uh, and then if there's any way that we can be of service, please reach out on the website. Many of you have my number, and I'm happy to give it to you at the end of the meeting today. Let me ask you any questions. Is there uh, any, any questions, questions from the board? I just want to know, is one of those requests, um, how does get an animal shelter? Well, I, I don't know that we've received a community project. We're, we're approaching that through the state budget. Yes. So the way, I don't think we received one for the last fiscal year or the upcoming one. But in February, it'll be an opportunity for you all to apply again if, if that is something you so wish. I just know Congress has these special projects that all of a sudden they mm -hmm. find they can do in different communities. Well, it's come county that community that he could do a really good one um, animal shelter. Absolutely. We would have folks to give testimony if we need that. Oh, no, I, I've heard. I've heard the importance of the animal <laughs> shelter. Yes, ma'am. And I would definitely urge the, the county to submit a project request for that next year. Any other comments or questions from the board? If not, ladies and gentlemen, I'll let anybody from the public I'd ask Mr. Webb a question. If not, you thank you, Mr. Webb. Don't keep it over too long, they'll find something to ask. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking I got out too easy. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> I would make a comment. The other day I needed to find some information about the Democratic people in the county. And I called uh, Congressman's office, and I think you're the one that gave me the information. That's the man you can call, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you have it. The man is a little bit. Moving on to other business. Go ahead, Mr. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. So the first item um, we're asking you to consider ratifying a previous board action for additional grant funds for Ward and Sewer District 6. Uh, I'll give you some background information on that and we'll request that you convene as the Governing Board of Water and Sewer District 6. Um, as you know, we received notice of additional grant funding available from USDA Rural Development for our infrastructure project in Water and Sewer District 6 in the amount of $2,327,000. Since USDA had to get those funds obligated before August 4th, you called a special meeting for August 2nd at 2 p.m. However, because of some unexpected and urgent family and health emergencies and obligations, only three members of the board were present at 2 p.m. for the special meeting. After consulting with USDA, it was clear that to avoid losing 2,327,000 of USDA grant funds, it was necessary for the board to immediately consider the grant amendment without a delay that would be uh, caused by calling for a later special meeting. Therefore, the board called an emergency meeting for August 2nd at 4 p.m. to approve the grant amendment. The emergency meeting was held on Tuesday, August 2nd at 4 p.m. A quorum was present, and the board properly considered and approved the grant amendment in time to secure the grant funding. Even though the meeting was properly called and a quorum was present, which, unanimous, which uh, unanimous, unanimously approved the action, I know it is important to you to be transparent with our citizens. Therefore, to show clear support for the acceptance of those grant funds in a regularly scheduled meeting of the board, I recommend that you convene as the governing board of Water and Sewer District 6 and then ratify the board's previous action to approve Amendment Number 2 to the Letter of Conditions for the USDA Rural Development Grant for Water and Sewer District 6, increasing the grant by the amount of $2,327,000. There's a motion to recess the regular meeting. Being this governing body of water and sewer district six. 
is to um, to ratify the board's previous action to approve amendment number two to the letter of conditions for the USDA Rural Development Grant for Water and Sewer District 6, increasing the grant by the amount of $2,327,000. Who makes that motion? Question. All in favor, let it be no by the vote side, aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, not as approved. Is the motion so adjourned? Governor Body of Water School District of Six and reconvene as a regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners. Second. Got a motion and a second. Questions? All in favor, let me know by the vote. Aye. Aye. All opposed, hearing none. We're now sitting as the County Commissioners again. All to the budget amendments, Mr. Sippers. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, you have uh, budget amendments <coughs> excuse me, presented for your consideration. Those at the front of the uh, budget amendment section, those that are required for your approval, I'll review those and give you some background. The rest are for your information. I do have an additional budget amendment, budget amendment number 6B, that should be at your place. I want to ask if you would consider us um, adding that budget amendment. Um, budget amendment number one, um, this is uh, our workers workers' compensation came in a little over $22,000 more than what we budgeted. So you're seeing that we're moving, um, we are uh, adding additional funds to the budget to cover those additional costs. Budget amendment number two, um, this is uh, the board approved accepting a Governor's Crime Commission Highway Safety Grant from the Sheriff's Office. This will appropriate those funds in the, uh, in the appropriate lines. Um, as a note that um, this pays uh, part of salary and related costs for a position, um, half of which must come from the county, which is coming from existing salary budget in the sheriff's office. Budget amendment number three, this is a grant that is above the annual allocation that we receive for what's called PSAP funds. PSAP stands for Public Safety Answering Point, or it's our number one. Uh, uh, calling center. Uh, these are additional grant funds we're receiving, so you'll see we're budgeting, receiving, and appropriating that in the appropriate lines. Budget amendment number four. This is to move funds to a newly created travel line in the uh, in the uh, sheriff's office. Uh, no additional appropriation for fund balance, we're just moving it from one line to another there. Budget amendment number five. These are uh, additional funds received in the health department. We are asking to consider approving this to appropriate that revenue and then to the appropriate expenditure line. Budget amendment number six. Um, this is um, uh, remaining funds to roll forward. These, this is part of ARPA funds that we received. Um, we used ARPA. In, in, these ARPA funds enabled us to budget $100,000 in um, in the planning office to do our urgent home renovations program that is underway. So this $24,000 is the balance for last fiscal year to roll forward. Budget Amendment 6A. Uh, you may recall that last year we received a little over $270,000 from Medicaid cost settlement funds. Um, what we have been doing for the last few years is using those funds to purchase vehicles uh, in EMS. Um, with those funds, we did purchase one uh, remount last year. Uh, the, we were hoping to be able to purchase a second one before the end of the fiscal year, but we were not able to identify one. We have identified one now, so we're asking that you uh, roll those funds forward so that will be appropriating that from fund balance into capital outlay and emergency services. And the last one for your approval, which is the one I'm asking if you, uh, if you will add for your consideration, um, these are funds from the PSAP program, as I mentioned before. These are part of the annual PSAP funds that we receive. Funds that go unspent go into a PSAP fund balance, so we are appropriating from that fund balance $106,840 uh, into that capital outlay line so that some uh, uh, equipment can be purchased. Happy to answer any questions that you might have on those or any of the other budgets. Amendment, but I recommend that you approve. 
are six and six A. Should they not have part uh, six? Six and six A. Um, if sometimes we those budget amendments are generated in the finance department, they were prepared in the finance department. So in that case, it doesn't have to have those the, the department heads. There, oh, there, I'm glad you asked. There was one I meant to, I did notice one in here, I forgot which one it is, that did not have my signature. I, I do approve it. I will make sure that I, um, it was on budget amendment number five. I will make sure that I go back and sign the original document. Um, the motion will be approved budget amendments one through six B. You have a seven motion. No, the budget amendment number seven is for your information. It's not required. One is a motion to approve budget amendment one through six B. Yes, sir. The motion. Second. Questions. All in favor, let it be known by both sides. Aye. Aye. All opposed. Hearing none. The budget amendments are approved. No wrong. Um, item number uh, item C regarding assistance policy for urgent repair program. Um, we have been awarded $76,000 by the North Carolina Housing Finance Agency under the 2023 cycle of the urgent repair program. The goal of the project is to assist at least five very low and low income families with special needs on addressing housing conditions that pose imminent threats to their life and or safety or to provide accessibility modifications and other repairs necessary to prevent displacement. NCHFA requires that we adopt an assistance policy and procurement disbursement policy before a funding agreement is issued. Uh, included for your consideration are those policies. I recommend that you approve both as presented. Motion. Second. Questions? We already have a list of people waiting. We have people that call all the time. We keep a list and then we let them know when we have new but we also advertise for the Any other questions? How, how is it that you're paying for the for the like, Eric and the program? So we, thank you. Uh, we, take, we take applications for a defined, a defined period of time, usually 30, sometimes 45 days. First, we have to determine that the household is eligible, and that is they have to show proof of ownership. They have to meet one of the el other eligibility criteria. Then beyond that, it is ranked. We have a ranking system. For example, uh, if it is an uh, uh, elderly person, the household gets certain priority points. If it is a large household that is five or more people, it gets priority points. Um, and then they are ranked and by those points and date of application. And then we simply go down as far as we can on that list. We, we normally have more people to apply than we have funds to, to us. Yes, ma'am. These these programs are for owner occupied dwellings. When you make that list, the ones that didn't quite make the cut, do they get rolled over the next time, or will they have to reapply? They often have to reapply. We have to we have to take a separate application, but we let them know when we. Any other questions? Can I get a motion on? All in favor, let me know my vote. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, now this next. Uh, next is regarding job descriptions for uh, newly created positions. As you are aware, the FY24 budget includes funding for the following new positions. The career navigator at grade 22, parks and recreation director at grade 23, and an in-house attorney for social services grade 25. The budget also includes adding back a delinquent tax specialist position, which was previously on our pay plan. That is added at grade 12. I recommend that you approve the job descriptions as presented, as well as the revised pay plan that includes those positions at, at, at the grades as stated. Motion. Second. Let me know by the votes. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Let the record reflect. Both sides. 
five one. Next. Uh, next is regarding sole sourcing for the purchase of water meters. Presented for your consideration is a quote to upgrade water meter reading system utilized by the utilities department, along with purchasing new water meters and associate appurtenances to replace water meters within several districts. The county, county's utilities department utilizes Neptune water meters to monitor water uses throughout District 1 through 5. However, District 6, which is in the town of Princeville, utilizes a badger meter system that was inherited at the time the county took over ownership of from the town of Princeville system, which currently leaves the utility department operating two separate meter reading systems. Currently, the badger reading system and water meters are in desperate need of replacement. Therefore, it's much easier to convert the entire badger system to, to the Neptune system. According to our financial policy under competitive bidding, when goods or services are only available from a single source, those items can be purchased through sole sourcing, but must be approved by the, board, the governing board prior to the purchase. I recommend that you approve the attached quote as presented. How old are the meters? I'm not sure. How old are they? Uh, they should be getting somewhere around about 15 years. Any other questions? All opposed? Um, the next item is regarding a resolution to appropriate additional opioid settlement funds. Um, as you are aware, counties are receiving additional funds from a second opioid settlement with five pharmacies referred to as the second wave. The distribution process mirrors the original settlement of regional counties. We have already received the first allocation of $64,714.67. Presented for your consideration is a resolution to update our appropriation from both settlements. The total amount includes the first two allocations from the first settlement wave, the amount received from the second wave, and the anticipated amount to be allocated later this fiscal year. I recommend that you approve the enclosed resolution as presented. Motion. Motion. Second. Questions. I have just a comment. Go ahead. Um, I, I think that we need to work with our attorney and the Association of County Commissioners because it's my understanding that the manufacturers have started to default on those payments and are going to renegotiate with these opioid payments. And we're allocating these funds um, and expecting payment over 16 years. And so I think that we need to make sure that we as a board are cognizant of that and are pertinent to the legislation and how that is the process is going to be. Make sure we, make sure we get it right. <laughs> Correct. Correct. I mean, it, they've committed to 16 years, but they just defaulted on their second payment of the billions of dollars. Good point. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. I think the record has not sent anything out on that from the association. It's, it's just, hitting, just hitting the news about those. And, they think that it's a way to renegotiate this. Um, so. Another question or comments? All in favor of being a part of the Aye. All opposed? Okay, none. It is approved. It's from the county ABC board. You can have um, item G, Mr. Thank you. Mr. Ray's approval of limits to correct of the audits and solid waste plan. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, you have here tonight amendments to both our solid waste ordinance and the um, and the uh, water and sewer or utilities ordinance that was adopted on June the 28th. Uh, we have some additions and corrections to make. Um, make. Uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Matthews, Mike Matthews, to come forward, and he's going to walk you through those changes to the ordinance. Uh, good evening. Um, so the first one you have before you is the solid waste ordinance. Um, it, this is amendment number one. Uh, when we got to looking through our fee structure for the solid waste department, we noticed that uh, there was just a few corrections that needed to be made. I don't know if I had fat finger syndrome or whatever when I sent it in. So um, one of the changes is the construction and demolition. Uh, we, we were supposed to have gone from $50 per ton to $55. Also, um, yard waste 
was it forty four fifty, which should have been forty six dollars per ton. And also, we left out the scrap tire disposal fee, um, which was not in the original ordinance, but it needs to be in this one at ninety dollars per ton. Any questions, Mr. Yeah, he, 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 he fixed it. 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 He fixed Right. It's, it's just, you said about the $90 disposal fee for the tires. Is that going to be back to the consumer? Yes. It, so uh, the way it works is uh, everybody in Anscombe County that does not live within uh, uh, town limits, town of Tarver, um, Pine Top, stuff like that, where they pay a solid, week, a solid wage fee, they have the option of going in and, and disposing of five tires per year, uh, which is just a simple home run. Um, when you get into businesses uh, like a Black Mills, like a Woolworths, or something like that, they pay a, a, a tax, disposal tax. Um, they go to the state and we in turn get reimbursed for that. Um, and of course, you pass that on to the customer. Yes, they do. When you go to buy a new set of tires, you pay a tax that tax. Yeah. Th this, the $90 per ton, is when you get an outsider, a farmer, or somebody like that, who collected a bunch of tires, they can come in and dispose of them at $90 a ton. So we, have, we just have to have a tip. Thank you for the time. Absolutely. Since we don't have uh, any other comments, any other questions about it? Sure it is. All right. We got to answer them. All in favor of the second? We've already passed the yeah. first one. He's going to review the second one. Sure the second one is the water and sewer operations. Um, this is 100% on me as well. So uh, when I sent in the fees, the only thing that needs to be corrected is the residential and commercial fees. They should have, the first 5,000 gallons is $7 per thousand. That is correct. But from there forward, it should have been seven fifty dollars and eight twenty five, dollars um, And we had them set at seven seventy five dollars and $8.25. So it's just that one correction to move them to seven fifty dollars per thousand and eight dollars per thousand. Got it, seven fifty dollars and eight. Right, that's that's what it should be. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the one we adopted was seven seventy five dollars and eight twenty five. dollars okay. It went up by $0.75 cent when it should have been, it should have been 50 That's the only correction on that order. Any other questions? Yes, sir. You need a se separate motion for me. Is there a motion for approval? I'll take a uh, The utilities, uh, water and sewer operations ordinance. Water and sewer operations. I'll like that motion. Second. Questions? All in favor, let me know by the vote. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, now let us move. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, you do have at your place, I ask if you'll consider a supplemental agenda item. And this is regarding consideration of approval of ambulance franchise agreement for coastal medical transport. Without an objection from the board. Here and on. Yeah, Coastal Medical Transport has submitted a franchise agreement to provide ambulance transportation in Edgecombe County. Edgecombe County citizens could benefit from having Coastal Medical Transport as a non-emergency ambulance transportation servicer to help meet the high demand of transporting our bed confined patients to in and out of counties, county doctor's appointments, local hospital discharges, and routine recurring care appointments such as dialysis. Currently, Edgecombe County EMS Non-Emergency Division is maximizing all opportunities to transport patients. However, the demand is now beyond our capability to manage considering prioritizing 911 emergency calls for service, uh, prioritization of recurring dialysis non-emergency transport, and inability of staff non-emergency transport units due to uh, professional demand. Uh, I do recommend that you approve the franchise agreement for coastal medical transport. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Questions? All in favor, let me know how to vote. Side aye. aye. All opposed. And none of this approved. 
Next, it's from Ghana. ABC board. Mr. Kevin Wiggins is recommended for reappointment. He's not related. Is there a motion to reappoint? So moved. Okay. All in favor, let me know. By the vote, sign aye. Aye. All opposed. Hearing none, he is reappointed. After this, there releases for review and approval. Mr. Edwards. Happy to answer any questions that you might have. Hearing no questions, uh, are there any questions? Is the motion to approve? Motion. Second. Second. Questions. All in favor, let me know my vote sign aye. Aye. All opposed, hearing on this report. Contracts for review and approval. Mr. Evans. Yes, sir. You see we have a number of contracts. Three of these these exceed the fifty thousand dollar limit that I can approve. Um, so they are a contract for uh, Dr. James Winslow, um, contract with uh Edgecombe Public Schools for the uh, state funds for uh, school nurses. And then finally, uh, health care for inmates, IMS uh, correction, health care. I do want to uh, update or correct that number for that contract for uh, health care in the detention center. Um, they're going to be starting their services in September. So that's 10 months they'll be providing. So it'll be a total contract amount of 462000 for those 10 months. Uh, happy to answer questions that you might have on those three or any others, but I do recommend that you. Any questions before we get a motion? And no one is there a motion? Second. Second. All in favor, let it be no matter what side. Aye. Aye. All opposed. Hearing none, they are approved. Uh, Department of Reports for Review. If, are there any questions? Um, or anything you need to you need to bring to our attention. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Antoine Brown, our emergency service director, to come forward. Uh, he's going to give you a um, tornado damage overview and update, um, and have a resolution we'd like for you to consider with that as well. Turn over. All right. Good evening. All right, so I'm going to give you an update as it relates to the tornado event, uh, Wednesday, July 19th, uh, here in Edgecombe County. First and foremost, I just want to thank the first responders and people, uh, everyone that had a hand in helping with the response and, and moving towards the recovery phase uh, that we're in now. Okay, it is on. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, so just a, a little bit of a brief. Um, so, of course, we were uh, impacted by an EF3 tornado about 1243 uh, on July 19th. Uh, the total impact here in Edgecombe County uh, was about 8.8 .8 miles. Um, it was in the county for about 16 minutes. We saw the width of the tornado anywhere from a third to a quarter of a mile wide at certain points. Um, impacts that we have, we had uh, two churches, a uh, chicken house, uh, commercial agricultural farm, uh, solid waste convenience site, uh, and then we had 28 uh, total residences. Uh, happy to report we had no fatalities. Uh, we did have two uh, subjects with life threat with life threatening injuries uh, on the day uh, of the tornado, uh, and we also had one with none life threatening issues. Everyone has been discharged uh, from the hospital at this point, so we're happy to report that. Uh, these are just some pictures. Uh, utilizing our drone cores to kind of cover some of the area. Uh, this is the Morning Star Church Road area near uh, Commissioner Powell's home. Uh, this is drone footage of the Cokertown Road area, just kind of surveying some of the damage. Uh, with this tool we have, we were within an hour of the tornado moving out of our county, we were immediately able uh, to launch this and begin to assess uh, the damages. Um, in, in connection with our uh, damage assessment team here locally. I'll try to move forward past this. There we are. Okay, so now moving towards recovery. Um, immediately at the hand of a chair commissioner on Saturday, Saturday, July 22nd, we held a tornado survivors meeting uh, that was at Phillips Middle School. Uh, there we were able uh, to, to kind of convene um, all of our tornado survivors to try to really get a grasp on what the unmet needs and, and to figure out uh, to begin the recovery process. Um, on Sunday, July 23rd, of course, Governor Cooper and his team came uh, and visited the county and with uh, the emergency management director, Will Ray, came. Um, 
as well to kind of survey so we can move towards, again, getting to where we need to be and start uh, the recovery process. Uh, we did hold, hold a meeting with the state recovery team on Monday, uh, July 24th at the Rocky Mountain Event Center. Um, there, the state uh, brought down their, the actual uh, assessment team. Uh, we used the state to tap into federal dollars, and so they came and began uh, to assess the damages um, of all of our residences and commercial structures that were involved. Uh, really two lenses that we have uh, to, to be able to tap into uh, funding uh, for our uh, folks that were impacted. Uh, the homeowners, we needed uh, 25 homes of 40% or greater damage. Uh, we were looking specifically at uh, uninsured or underinsured homes. Um, and then local government municipalities, we needed uh, uninsured expense of 10000 and at least 1% um, of our county operating budget. Uh, we did not um, meet uh, these thresholds uh, as a county. As you can see, um, it's kind of broken down here a little bit. So we have uh, affected, minor, major, and destroyed. Uh, so we had a total of five homes, starting from the top, we had a total of four homes that were affected. Uh, three of those four were insured, minor. Uh, we had a total of uh, 11 homes, seven of those were insured. Um, and then major and short is really what we get into using those numbers for the calculation of trying to get for the individual assistance of uh, the 25 homes at 40% or greater. Um, and remember, that's underinsured or uninsured. And so of the, the 13 that were major, we had four homes that were uh, insured. Um, and then of the destroyed, we did have one home that was uh, in, insured. This is kind of the track of um, the forestry service kind of came in and uh, did a track of our timber uh, damages. Uh, so you kind of see this here uh, in Edgecombe County, we were about $320,000 of estimated damage uh, in, in timber, about 222 total acres. Again, that's the best of same information. Um, so our next steps, uh, kind of, uh, this is a continuing process. Uh, we're constantly working with uh, the state long-term recovery team. Uh, we had a meeting today. Uh, some of the priorities you kind of see here from our partners, um, United Way, again, is still continuing to provide a financial support of the citizens impacted. Uh, we understand that, that debris removal is a, is a big thing here. Um, and so we're really tapping um, to, to begin to uh, remove some debris from uh, the right of ways. Um, over to the right is a barcode, uh, QR code, excuse me, from United Way. Uh, they have a lot of uh, partners and folks in the community who want to come out and help. They have chainsaws and trailers and equipment that they can use that they want to go out and help. Um, and so they're kind of serving as our central point or our hub for all of our volunteer organizations to kind of to connect and uh, kind of have a plan of action uh, for Edgecombe County. So they're kind of leading that for us. Um, if there are citizens that still have unmet needs, we've been really aggressive uh, locally and with the state team as far as reaching out, um, going door to door and connecting with citizens who were impacted uh, by the tornado. Um, if, if we've missed someone or if there's still are unmet needs, we encourage citizens to call uh, 211. 211 is a, a service that, that that's provided by the state that we pay for. Um, and essentially, it serves as a hub as well. And so there are professionals on the other line that can connect you to um, any type of resource that still may be needed. Um, and then, <coughs> any questions? Did you get a, uh, a list of uh, needs that you have in meetings with your That's exactly. That, that, that's, that's a great question. So. Uh, at the meeting we did, there was a disaster information sheet which specifically asked uh, for unmet needs for all the attendees and even the, the folks who could not make it. We personally took the forms out to their homes um, and were able to kind of survey and see what those uh, needs are. We do have those. Um, part of it is a clause on the disaster form uh, that it asked um, uh, the people who were impacted if we could share that with local, state, and federal partners. And if they sign, we do. So, so far, uh, we have shared it with the American Red Cross, and that's how they've been able to connect with a lot of folks um, in United um, as well. Tarrell. I just thought some of us may know other organizations and volunteer organizations that may want to help. Sure. But don't know what to do. So. Yeah, right. So the, the point, per, the point, Commissioner, I would say 
Uh, what we're trying to do is centrally hub everyone because we get calls every day. And so we, we're constantly meeting with United Way, um, our long-term recovery partners, the, the Baptists um, have been very active. And so a lot of those uh, partners are all coming together through United Way to have conversations about what our next step should be. So we all stay in sync and moving forward together. And is someone making sure that we have equity in yeah, equality of Absolutely. Mass, it's okay. Yes, absolutely. And, and I will again. say, just, just to add that uh, uh, Mr. Brown mentioned we had a meeting this morning with representative from emergency management talking about funds for unmet needs, and it was a promising meeting. Uh, they've been working very hard. I mean, they know the importance, not just for us, but even places in Nash County outside of the door, outside of Dorches that was not declared. And there are still many unmet needs. And so uh, the state has been very active in identifying funds. And so um, uh, we were told today that we should know something definitive, uh, at least which direction we can move in by the end of the week. It will likely be a memorandum of agreement that will have to come back before this board if there are going to be some funds that will pass through us. A lot of it will be working, these agencies working directly with the homeowners that won't necessarily have to come through us. But some of that like debris removal, for example, will come through the county. Any questions, Mr. Brown? But even though we had good support, I promise to me, we do have a resolution. I don't want to forget that. Go ahead, sir. I, I just wanted to mention that uh, I attended church on Sunday at the uh, New Star of Christ, Church of Christ in Rocky Mount, and we all want Ms. Powell to know that our prayers are with her and her family. The, yes, we have the resolution. It's in your packet. Uh, and the resolution basically says, even though I know the state is working hard to identify funds, uh, it is requesting, uh, you know, it is describing the, the damage impact we had here in the county and um, asking the state uh, to please find, see if they can find any funds to, um, to help us address some of these unmet needs. Uh, I mentioned this to Mr. Joe Stanton from the Emergency Management Office, State Man Emergency Management Office today, and he said he thought this would be a, a really good thing for the county to, to adopt. And it's uh, it's just behind, it's in the uh, department head um, report section. Well, if we want to approve that, I just wanted to make comment about it, but we can approve that. Go ahead, we'll make comment, go ahead. Okay, I, my, mine wasn't about, about that, thankful for that, but I was just looking through these after this, so if you want to, we can vote on that resolution while we were there, and then I want to just make a comment about water. Okay, uh, is there a motion to approve the resolution? Okay. Second. Just in the uh, in the departmental reports, I just wanted to comment on, on the water. And so, Go right ahead. I I'd spoken when I saw the water meters. I, I'd spoken to Mr. Matthews this afternoon um, about kind of where that funding was coming from and how that was being done. But in that process, we start to look at these these after lists and these department reports, and a lot of this stuff can get swept swept under the rug. But the water department this month has a 17% loss ratio. If you look at the previous reports, we're averaging 38% loss. So I just want to acknowledge publicly the work that they are doing and out there in the summer making our water system better. I mean, that, that is real money to the county and making a better water system. And they're working in the dead heat of the summer. Last month it was a 24%, this month it's a 17%. We've never been, we've been at 28% the month before that. We've never been below 30% in any month. So that is tangible work that they are doing for our community. So thank you to him. I know he had a meeting that he couldn't be here, so he couldn't say that to him, but wanted to be on the record that we see it and acknowledge it. Any other comments? So I will call my report. Any comments from the board on Um Under manager's report, you see have, uh, the workforce development indicators. Uh, uh, the monthly report, monthly update, also the TDA uh, financial report, 
I do want to mention briefly as far as an update on uh, county line merger. Um, the what the school system calls the design team. Uh, it's been a group that they uh, gathered, I guess, over a year ago, and um, they they reconvened that group. Uh, they really started, excuse me, started to get into some details about how they might use those four school buildings when the county line merger happened. Um, how they plan, may assign uh, grades to those schools and students to those schools. They're looking at different scenarios, so they haven't made final decisions on that, but I just wanted this board to be aware that they're working in that level of, of detail at this point. Um, um, also, um, there's another committee, we call it the County Line Merger Committee, which uh, both superintendents, both county managers, chair of the boards, um, as well as the attorneys, we've been meeting um, every couple months or so. Um, we had a meeting about a month ago. We talk, we're starting to now get into some of those granular details. In fact, we have a meeting, uh, our next meeting tomorrow, and we'll be talking. They're looking at details like assets that will have to be transferred. So just wanted to, again, wanted this board to be aware that the work and the planning is getting into that level of discussion. Also want to make sure that this board is aware, um, I'm sure you'll remember that uh, right from the Edgecombe CDC built about 16, 17 years ago, a building at Fountain Park, um, just across from what was the women's prison. And it was a, uh, it was a small business incubator, it operated for a long time. They had a couple of anchor tenants, uh, including North Carolina Department of Revenue, what used to be Employment Security, now NC Works was there, and a few other uh, tenants. They lost a uh, revenue uh, office that call center moved out several years ago. Um, and long story short, in the last few months, they've lost their last tenant. And so they have some interest in selling the building so they can reinvest those funds into other projects like crosses at 64. Um, we've had several conversations about the possibility of that building being used for some type of high school or high school option in Rocky Mountain area as it relates to county line merger. Um, in the meantime, you'll remember that uh, back when Triangle Tire was planning to come to the county, part of the incentive was we were going to build a training center in Kingsborough Industrial Park. Well, Triangle Tire backed out, Golden Leaf Foundation pulled those funds back, said if another project comes, let's call. Uh, the community college had received a state appropriation of two and a half million dollars to put uh, equipment in that training center. And they had that grant agreement in hand still. Um, and so after some discussion about best highest use of those funds, talking with uh, our representative uh, Willingham, those funds now through state budget office have been reappropriated um, or um, redirected to be able to purchase that building at Fountain Industrial Park to be used as some type of high school option. And we still have lots of details to work out about that. We are having ongoing conversation between community college and the school system. Uh, the, the school system, their committee, as they meet, they're putting that into the conversation as when they're talking about, you know, where to put students and that kind of thing. So um, still some things to be worked out about that, but I want you to be aware of that. I think that's a really good opportunity. It's a 40,000 square foot building. Um, it is in really good shape. It's got good parking front and back of it. Um, it, it likely won't be big enough if, for when we eventually transition all 450 or so student, high school students over to Edgecombe schools. Um, so we're looking at other funding to possibly either build something onto it or building something next to it. Um, you'll remember that the state several years ago created what they call the need-based capital improvement fund and they're using lottery dollars to help counties build school facilities. Mm -hmm. It used to be a requirement that if you got those funds to build a new school, they would withhold your lottery proceeds for three years. That provision has been removed. So now it's just it's, it's total grant funds. We've seen some counties get as much as 40 and $50 million of grant funding. So we're having conversation about us exploring that as a funding opportunity as well. So still lots to be discussed, lots to be worked out regarding that, but I did want you to know, number one, the progress that those two committees are making and moving towards um, preparing for the county line merger that, as you all know, maybe some of the public don't know, 
that by state statute is is going to happen next fall. It has to happen. We have to have a plan in place by November of this year. Uh, and second thing, to let you all as a board and the public know about this opportunity now that's been presented to us for this building at Fountain Park, which I think is a really good opportunity. Yes, ma'am. You know the women's prison? Yes. Now there's another facility that young people have, have been occupying. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the women's prison has been closed for years. My right. understanding is the state is look at, looking at repurposing that as to some type of um, state emergency response facility or something like that. Um, the, the youth development center that you're talking about, I guess it's probably about a mile down the road or so. I mean, it's very secure. Uh, I actually have to kind of know where it is to, to be able to find it back there, but I, I can certainly see what they've done. And you know, they've closed off this road that goes to It is. It used to be a, a much more direct access coming off of 301 right across the train track. And as you know, when they built the intermodal site, they closed that crossing. Um, so you do have to kind of go around and get to it. And and, and that is a little bit of a, an inconvenience. Um, but I think for the opportunity that we have to get this building, um, likely at no cost to the county, at least the purchase of the building, um, is uh, something I think Lots of decisions to be discussed and made, and certain opportunities for you all to have opportunity for more input and final decisions about how we move forward. I, I, just to piggyback on what you're saying, I think it's excellent idea because of our development agent of the county saying that they serve those children. Mm -hmm. And then you've got dropping outside of the county, they serve children like that too, so that would be an easy fix for what we're trying to do, especially for the North. I'll, I'll text you to make sure. Okay. Move on. Just a clarification on that is that we're not saying that we're going to build a high school there. We're not saying that as a board by, by us doing that. We're not uh, doing that. Uh, I, I don't think that we, I sent some of my discussion that it, it would not be for a, I don't think it's a good site for a high school. It is a good site for what we intend to support the board, what the school board might plan to do. Okay. Okay, but not to build a high school. Okay. Uh, a, point of, a point of order that I want to make that we're uh, not endorsing building another high school. Uh, uh, not at this uh, time. Uh, we, we need a high school for that in the county, but I, we are not talking about that site as a high school. Okay. In fact, you know, when we're talking about the building of schools, you got to have enough acreage and it's a whole bunch of things that you have to go into. But the building of the school is a school issue. Right. Next question. Okay. Uh, I'm going to update on the broadband project. Uh, you are aware that, uh, you know, Funding from the state through the Great Grant, $4 million, was originally um, awarded to a company called Cloudwise. Um, they had to make some changes to their application, and once it was reviewed a second time, that that um, allocation of funds was pulled back from Cloudwise, and now it's been given to Brightspeed. Brightspeed, a representative was here a couple months ago and gave a presentation. Um, and so that still working out details for that to move forward. So we're, we're pleased about that. Uh, I do do want you to know, and it is public record that uh, that Cloudwise has um, has brought a lawsuit against the state um, because they felt like that those funds were pulled back from them unfairly, or whatever the case might have been. Um, but I did have a, uh, I had a call with representative from the uh, state. Uh, the IT office uh, about a week or so ago, and they wanted to assure us that they're they're going to, you know, vigorously, I guess, push back against that lawsuit. But they wanted us to know that this is not going to stop them from moving forward with us with Brightspeed because they know how important it is for the county. They know how long that we have been waiting for this. So they just wanted to assure us 
that they are going to push forward with us working with Brightspeed. So there will be some contracts and some things we're already starting to have conversations about that um, that will be coming back before you, but just wanted you to be aware. Also, uh, they let me know that they are going to work hard to try to fund a second project in Edgecombe County. That has been their goal, to try to fund as many as possible two projects in each county. And so they see the great need here. They see that this is something that you all uh, very much support. So they're going to work on possibly awarding um, a grant for a second project in the county. So um, more details to come. And as those details come, I'll be sure to uh, update you on that. Yes. You know, when you go to church, you get asked all these kind of questions. Why the internet is not working? Well, the Red Hill of the Hurt District, there's no such thing as that church. Yesterday, uh, a bishop came and asked the new minister, the first thing I want you to do is get broadband out here. Like, how's he going to do that? So, my question is, um, who would those churches talk to with right speed? Because I told you, know, that's a little bit above what I can do. But I would be glad to give you the name of someone to talk to. Um, and then a friend of mine told me about localities in Pine Tops. And I wanted to know, what do we know about them? And is it just specifically the Pine Tops? Because she sounded like she had a good deal. And I wanted to know, I'm here at Tarborough. Can I get that deal? Yeah, locality networks, I think it's called. They, they've been there for a few years now. They bought out the old, I think it was green light system that was in and around Pine Tops. They bought that system, took it over, had been just gradually expanding from there. We, we've heard a lot of positive things that they've got good service. Um, I think I think that their, their interest is really just continuing to slowly build out from that hub there in Pine Tops. So far, they didn't seem to have been necessarily interested in, 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 in jumping over to other areas of the county. I think I've heard from many customers, are, are you on, you on, it, um, you're down for it, outside. It's so it's like, you know, the whole line of bridges can't go through. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, they do great, they do great service. But it is very small, very limited. And, you know, when they come into your area, it's kind of like uh, that little survey. It's like if, you know, if oil bills want it, that might not cut it, but if it's 60, it, you're probably going to be, that's, that's kind of right. So, yeah. That's private, that's private money. I mean, that's a, that's a private entity that's right. not taking any government money at all. Right. He's Everybody not a partner. To your first question, I will say if, if you have anyone from church or pastor, whoever, if you want to give me a name and phone number, I'll be happy to pass that along to uh, contacts at Brightspeed. I'm sure Brightspeed would be happy to see, number one, is the church or whoever's asking in their planned project area. If not, if it's out, you know, is it close enough that they might be? I think it depends on the customer basis. It is. But I, I'm, I'm not prepared to do anything positive, so that's not. I was going to make a suggestion oh, before that. Please, please. I'll go in and write it. Please. Thank you. Yeah, but and, and the great state funds are enabling them to now go into these more sparsely populated areas that they would be otherwise with their own private investments. Um, um, I briefly, I'll mention that, you know, we've uh, we've had Rock Mount office, Health Department office closed uh, for some time now, um, part of which was, you know, uh, just sort of uh, interruption of COVID, but um, limited staff to be able to run two clinics um, together. You know, we've talked before that it is important, we believe, to reopen that office because over half of our population of county citizens live inside the city limits of Rock Mount. So we do want to make sure we're available and able to provide services as much as possible. Excuse me. So we're going to be open there five days a week. There will be clinic there on one day at least to start off and then some other services uh, provided. But we do invite you to uh, join us on August the 14th at 11 a.m. We're going to do a grand reopening of the Rackman Health Department office um, and open it up for citizens who want to come in and see the maturity and welcome to join us. Um, I'll mention item H, update on the Get Off the List initiative. We did hold our first community engagement session on July 31st. We had very good attendance. I was pleased 
Um, we, we received some good questions, good feedback. Uh, our goal is, first of all, to let those who might not be aware, aware of what this Get Off the List initiative is, and that is we're targeting uh, these lists that we're on and trying to uh, work more collaboratively across different um, entities and partners to work together to increase their good output so that we can move in the direction of, if not getting off some of these lists, at least moving to a better place on some of these lists. Um, so we had really good community um, um, attendance that we'll be having our second one on the 21st um, at the Rocky Mountain Event Center beginning at 6 p.m. and uh, hoping for um, hoping for a good turnout as well. Um, and I don't know, I want to steal Ms. Harris's thunder, but I know she did share some information with me um, that she has been appointed, in some cases reappointed to uh, five committees with NACO. She continues to serve um, very diligently and represent us very well with the National Association of Counties. I know they recently had their annual conference. Those committees include the Healthy Counties Advisory Board, Immigration Reform Task Force, Membership Standing Committee, Programs and Services Standing Committee, and the Rural Action Caucus. So thank Ms. Harris for NACO is a, is a very important uh, partner for us as counties on the national level. Not only do they represent our interests as when it comes to federal government, um, executive, uh, particularly with Congress, uh, but also they are conveners of resources for us as counties, and they are, we value them greatly. And thank Ms. Harris for um, her uh, continued uh, participation uh, with them. Uh, that's all I was going to bring to your attention for a manager's report. I have to answer any questions. Any questions for the service? Okay. Just had a comment on the TDA report um, again we kind of flip over this report but if you look at the budget for the TDA and there's a lot of people that go into this number they're performing 140 percent above budget on occupancy tax that's that speaks to the people that work in our tourism and really are driving people to Edgecombe County that number is really going to go up this year if you don't know we've got our, the mountain to sea trail bike tours coming to county and that, Chamber has filled every single room that is available in Edgecombe County. They have filled in, with, in the hospitals, I mean, in a hotel, and then they're going to Nash County as well. So they have asked citizens to help house people. They've got people sleeping on the common. So that is really that speak, speaks to the work that they're doing. Um, and again, 140% above budget. Thank you. At this time, uh, commissioners. I did want to report, I, I did go to Austin, Texas for our National Association of County Commissioners um, and went to several sessions. Um, one of the sessions that was very interesting was how counties are getting created to meet housing needs for the homeless. In fact, they, they did a tour and we showed these small kind of houses that they are building in the counties are building to help the homeless start having you know a place to go and that was very interesting for them to go on the website and take a look at that. And I also found out in my human services meeting that Edgecombe is not the only one who, who cannot find people to work in DSS, in the health department, it is all across the country we found it out in our resilient counties. Um, and talk about different ways of how to get people to come into those departments. It's going to have to be more than just a raise. It's going to have to be an atmosphere. It's going to have to be working environments. Um, it's just going to be a, a lot of different things to bring people in and get them to stay. Um, that was one of the, the interesting. The most interesting was the crisis in America on civility. How we talk to one another. How we treat each other. Um, that goes for citizens as as well as elected um, officials to be civil to one another. So that was very interesting. Uh, we have, and some of those counties have had people come into their meetings with guns. Uh, they had to show up at their homes because they disagree with something that happened you know, at a board meeting. Um, and then the, the very most important one was mental, the mental health center. You know, say we, we're coming out of a pandemic in 2021, and a lot of our employees, a lot of our family members have not addressed the mental drain um, that the pandemic has on a lot of people. And I think 
think we need to do something for our employees because I don't think we've really done anything in the middle of health to really let them know. You know, I know we've got a number they can call and those kind of things, but we need to make sure that we are keeping up with the mental health of our employees and our families uh, because the suicide rate has tripled uh, since the pandemic. And believe it or not, we have people coming to work every day even at DSS, who have to get funding from DSS to keep their families healthy. So, you have to make yourself on the right way to do it. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Any, any other comments? I have one comment, um, and I think this is speaking to a citizen comment about the leasing of the vehicles. Is my understanding is that that meeting is actually going to happen on August 11th, but for reiteration, We've asked, I've asked the board at our May meeting to have support to have that by the budget. We still don't have it, and so this is the fourth meeting in a row that I've asked us to have information on leasing of vehicles that it was supposed to be presented back in May. Any other comments from the board? Hearing none. Okay. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we will. Going to closed session and discuss an economic, economic development uh, matter. Is there a motion to go into closed session? Question. Question. All in favor of it, nobody votes aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none. Thank you for coming, ladies and gentlemen. They got a storm. The bike was being at one on the hotel. He retired from bike the sick of the the bike we yeah, um, I don't know how far he is in the but I know he got on the day. And he's right. gone away to my house. I don't think he got to get it. So he's not going to talk about it. So he's here to go off top of it. But what happened is really he's going to have to move. He's not going to talk about how he was going to bend it. So that's what I'm going to do.